yes, I mean, it, it, it is. Um, but of course, um, of course, journalists and whistleblowers have to work together and there has to be a relationship of trust. Um, I think in this case, it's a slightly unusual whistleblower journalist relationship because, of course, we didn't work together. I didn't know who my whistleblower was. Uh, we, we had to work in the dark. Um, in, a, in a sense, because Catherine was so principled in the way that she blew the whistle, she was, uh, she was not someone who, who was uh, out for herself. She was not someone who wished to uh, leave vast amounts of documents. Uh, she was not uh, an elitist. Um, that made it really hard for us because all we had was this, this series of words on a piece of paper and we had to work back from there. Um, and it was hugely frustrating. So we found ourselves in this rather peculiar situation that when our source was identified, initially we were absolutely delighted. When we heard that someone had been arrested, our initial, our initial sense was of huge relief. <laughs> and then it's kind of think, oh no, 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 of course not, no, no, it's absolutely terrible. Um, so, it, so it was a slightly unusual situation to be in. But I do, I mean, I would say that one thing that journalists should always remember is that the job of whistleblower is a very difficult one. It's a very isolated one. And, um, you have to be, I think, very sensitive and very careful because actually, if you were to honestly look deeply within yourself, um, would you as a journalist ever recommend a close friend or a close member of your family to be a whistleblower? I think that's a very difficult question to answer. It's a very, very difficult job. <laughs> Thank you. Great question. Um, no, at first, because it seems almost too simple. Um, and I know that Catherine and I met for those first five days, and I know that Catherine's response to me, probably quite understandably, was first of all, sort of like a bomb who's this guy from Hollywood coming in, do I trust him? And frankly, I was going, well, do I trust her? But I think, I'd like to think, certainly for me, within the first day, I felt very, very safe. And there's a line in the film that kind of sums up a moment when I, when I knew I wanted to make a film and my skepticism was dealt with and it was when, and it's in the film and Catherine said, yes, it's the sort of thing that the interrogator asked me when I said, Catherine, you're a spy. You hack people's computers. You listen to into conversations. You're in the, this world. What did you think was going to happen? You work for the government. And she said, I don't work for the government. And that's when I stopped in my tracks. I don't know if you remember this kind of like that, because I just made notes for five days. And, and that was the moment when she went, I work for the British people, and if the government is lying to the British people, don't I have a duty to point that out? Who do I work for? You know? um, and I, that, that sort of gave me the theme of, of the film, which I think is loyalty, which sounds very broad, but actually it's pretty tricky, I realized, to be loyal to, to your own conscience, and then the question to her marriage, which was very difficult, and then are you loyal to the government, or are you loyal to the country, or are you loyal to something even broader in, in terms of humanity? Where does loyalty lie? You should be loyal. It's a bit like what you said about truth. Tell the truth. Be loyal. But what does loyalty really mean? And, and there are different loyalties, and sometimes you have to choose. And I thank God that I haven't been under the pressure that you were under, Catherine, because the real reason I wanted to make a film because it kept asking myself, would I have the courage to do what she did? On a very human level, Get all the politics. The, the film really, for me, asks the question, what would you do in your organization if you came across something that you felt need to be brought to light and you risk losing your job? And in her case, she risked losing not only her job, but her freedom. And I salute you for that, because that's great. You see on the screen there is only, only really the beginning. Right. But we still do not know what was happening. There is still a job of work to be done, a journalistic job of work to be done, a campaign job of work to be done, to find out what GCHQ and NSA were really up to. What happened when they spied on, on the UN? What 
Why did they drop the case? Why did they pursue Kathy for so long? We don't have the same um, compensation culture in, in the UK that you have here. And you know, there is an argument to be said that, that Catherine is, is due her answers. Now, some of that's come through the film, but I do think that, that there is still uh, a story to be told, that, that, that um, there are still unanswered questions that come from this film. So, yeah, I think it's well, very yeah. important to know. Yeah. Well, I guess for the first two years after the trial was, you know, dropped, um, I probably did suffer a little bit from post-traumatic stress, right. only minorly, because it was only when I had to relive the events that, you know, I would get kind of stressed out. And that's only when people came and asked them questions about it. So, but it, it, it's also like a kind of anti-climax as well, when your case is dropped and you, we felt like we didn't have our day in court. You know, right. we, we wanted to put the war on trial. Um, we wanted everybody to see that the whole war was built on a pack of lies. Right. And, and that never happened. So in a, in a way, on, although on a personal level, I was relieved that I didn't have to go through all that stress of going to court and probably having all the kind of salacious gossip being dragged mm. out in the press and you know my husband's name splashed across <coughs> and oh, and by the way, he's an asylum seeker and oh, and by the way, he's a Muslim and right. you know, and all of that, which would have probably made life very difficult for us. Right. Yeah, they, 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 um, they won by letting us win. Right. In a way. In a way. Exactly. They, uh, they decided to put an artificial end on the story, which meant that, that no longer did people report on it. Mm. You know, the, the great hope from bringing the story back into public domain now is that we will be in a position to pursue this further. Right. First of all, wonderful movie about wonderful actions, uh, and if this question stresses you out or you don't want to answer it for any reason, totally fine. Um, there's the line in the movie, I think war is sometimes necessary. Did that happen? Did you believe it? And do you still believe it? Um, yeah, I think I've changed my view on that. <laughs> Good for you. Um, yeah, I mean, I you sort of think, well back then I thought maybe in self-defensive um, situations, if, you know, if your country is literally being attacked, um, what do you do? Uh, I, I welcome your response to that question, <laughs> because that, that's basically my, my you know, only caveat, is that what do you do if your country is literally, you know, if people are invading your country, Stop encouraging people to invade your country <laughs> by ruining theirs. <laughs>
great for my kids. Or what, that, that's been, so it really is usually, and I'm not making a joke of that, it's like you can't plead, I stole because it was necessary to feed my kids. The defense has typically only worked with firemen smashing down your door to get to a neighbor's house to rescue a kid. Something to do with saving life. We break law, so you've broken the law, but it was necessary to break the law in order to achieve this much higher good. And so Ben's innovation is say, well, maybe I can use that in this case. Catherine broke the law of the Official Secrets Act in order to save potentially thousands of lives. And it's even better if the war's illegal, because if the war's illegal, then it gets murky. Bear in mind, there is no law going. He's making up an argument. He's saying this defense exists. Can I apply it in this circumstance? And if the war is illegal, then surely it is necessary to expose this illegal war in order to save lives from dying illegal in an illegal war. If the war is legal, well, what trumps what? Does the fight in a legal war trump the need to save lives in a legal war? Probably. But he never got to test that argument because they shut it down. So we don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> it could be a whistleblower reform. Uh, well, you're a little bit. There's virtually always a national security exception to that that wouldn't cover this case, that wouldn't cover NSA whistleblowers, that won't cover people talking about actual war making and quote unquote national security policy. I just want to thank you so much for making what is a remarkably accurate movie. Thanks. Um, it was brilliantly done, it was compelling. There, there were one or two questions, if I could. I mean, I've had a with this case very closely. What was it accurate at the end? With, was that the reason that they dropped it? To let you stew for a while? Or were they hoping that you would knuckle under and plead, and then that would solve their problem? And one, one aspect of this that I've always been curious about was what exactly happened in the other countries? And I don't know if, if, if any of you all Well, I'll try and answer your first question.